It is now my pleasure to invite you into a conversation with four upper school students who are going to share how the concept of connections comes alive every day at King. Please join me in welcoming Layla, Joppel, Hathaway, and Katie. All right, so we're going to start with some introductions. If you can just say your full name, what grade you are in right now, and what grade you came to King. Jopal, you want to get started? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jopal. I am a senior at King, and I came in first grade. Hi, everyone. I'm Hathaway. Um, I am a junior right now, and I started in fifth grade. Hi, my name is Layla Simone. I am a freshman currently, and I came to King in sixth grade. Hi everyone, I'm Katie. I'm a senior right now and I came to King in seventh grade. Awesome, that's great. So I'm going to get right into some of the questions that I have. Um, Japal, I'm gonna start with you. I understand you have an interest in economics and investment. Can you tell us a little bit about this interest and how it was developed and did it involve any particular teachers, perhaps an independent study, but start from the beginning because I know you have a great story to tell. Sure. So. Ever since I was little, I've always been interested in investing, and I guess this sparked because my grandparents always talked about investing. They always had MSNBC on the TV, and I've been investing for a long time, since I was probably around 10 years old, so it's something that I've been very passionate about for a while, but then coming, I mean, through my economics classes at King, last year I took AP Micro and Macroeconomics. That really just solidified my interest in the field of in economics, of investing. And through that cl class, I was able to see how there were so many connections between economics and other disciplines um, that I've been learning about at King. And because of this interest in economics, I have decided this year to pursue an, an independent study and the essential question that I'm researching is how multinational corporations affect wage dynamics in developing countries. And I've decided to continue working with Mr. Roche, who was my economics teacher last year, and who has been really helpful this year in developing my independent study and helping me further my passion. That's great, that's, that's awesome. You know, I actually saw on social media and also in the newsletter that the Invest Investment Club had recently um, connected with a King alumna and also had invited, made another real world connection by inviting um, in an investment management firm. Can you talk about those two things? Sure, so I am one of the leaders of the Investment Club here at King and we recently had the opportunity to talk with some members of Brown Advisory Firm, who, for those who don't know, is the firm that manages some of King's endowment. And we, as the investment club, have been given the opportunity by King to invest some of the endowment. <coughs> so Brown Advisory Firm actually came to speak with the entirety of the club, and they were able to give us some really helpful insight on how to go about investing especially for the new members who may not know as much. So it was really a helpful experience to connect with them and collect with, connect with some prior King alumni. That's great. Just out of curiosity, how many kids are in the club? There is roughly 60 to 70 kids 60 in the club. 60 or 70? Yeah. So it's a very popular club here at King. <laughs> but it's been great, and we've had very strong attendance for the many meetings we've had so far this year. So I just want to put a plug, you know, for the future when you're alumni and you've made incredible amounts of money in your investments. <laughs> um, we need to continue to grow our endowment. So remember that this is where you got started, okay? Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Ha, thank you. Hathaway, I know that you've been able to connect your interest in women's issues to your academics. Let's begin by talking about the Tom Main Fellowship. And um, many people may not know this. The Tom Main Tom Main Fellowship, named after a former head of school, um, is a prestigious award given to two outstanding sophomores to research, write, and present a paper on a liberal arts topic of major global interest. Can you tell us a bit about your topic, how you picked it, and what you hope to learn more about? 
So I'm focusing on the issue of women in poverty and especially um, the concern of abortion and especially around the election, um, how women in poverty are affected by this. Um, my partner and I, Sienna Barlow, have been working on this project and have done a little bit of research on the history of abortion, and we're looking for mentors that um, are able to educate us more on this topic. Um, the application process was um, pretty simple, but very enlightening because we were able to research minorly about the topic beforehand and contacted some um, teacher advisors and were able to um, connect with um, one Miss Rossler and two um, Mr. G, who is a history teacher. They're both history teachers. Um, and they've been very helpful in the process. Um, and it's just been a great experience so far. Does your research also include things like domestic abuse or that, those kinds of topics as well? So we kind of took a very broad question and uh, narrowed it down to um, just women in healthcare. Um, we're going to touch upon some domestic abuse and the other issues that come with that, um, such as like education and finding contraceptives uh, as well. But we're mainly focusing on women in healthcare. Got it. And it's clear that this fellowship provides the opportunity for deeper and more meaningful learning and connections, um, and obviously it's connected to real life issues. I, I understand that you have also, uh, I guess maybe two summers ago, traveled to Tanzania, and this past summer went to Brown. Can you talk about those two different experiences? Yes, for sure. So my family and I two summers ago were able to travel to Tanzania to deliver solar lights to women in Maasai villages. Um, and they're very underprivileged women who live in communities that um, are very impoverished. <coughs> and it was just amazing to see how they're so connected to each other. And they really, these women only have each other because their husbands um, are off at work. They take care of their kids on their own. And it was just a very life-changing experience. And it was um, um, an amazing experience to have um, with my family, especially. Um, yeah. You went with your family? Is yes, that what you said? I did, I did, yes. Okay. Um, and then Brown this summer, sorry, um, I went to the pre-college program at um, Brown University this summer and took a Introduction to Women's Studies course. Um, I learned so much and it wouldn't have been without the help of another history teacher in, our um, in the history department. I had a recommendation letter from um, Mr. Harrison and it was just such an amazing experience and I learned so much about all three waves of feminism and how it's impacted the United States and the world and how we've grown. Awesome, thank you. Layla, we're gonna, I didn't actually mean to necessarily go in this order, but um, I'm going to ask you to talk about the Ready Project. And for those who don't know, the Ready Project is a newer addition to the middle school. It's a capstone project for the eighth graders. Um, and Ready stands for Research Experience Action Designed by You. The Ready Project is actually all about connections. It's about connecting to a student's passion, connecting across disciplines, and going deeper into a topic that has relevance in your life. So I'm gonna ask you, Layla, to talk about what was your Ready Project and why did you choose it? My Ready Project was about how microphones pick up sound, how their placement affects how the sound travels, and how soundboard techniques create an immersive and emotional experience in theaters. I chose, this, I chose this question because I've always been on the performing side. I've always been up here to sing or play an instrument or do a play, and I've never really gone into the technical side. So I was very curious about how those things work together. That's great, and I'm assuming you were, you were following your interest in theater by yes. choosing that. Did, you, did it end up involving other areas of study other than theater? Not exactly, it mostly just worked with theaters, but I did kind of branch out in my own research into how it worked with you know, recording a musician and instruments and a singer, mm -hmm. but I mostly focused my presentation on theater. One could possibly call the science of sound a science though, right? Yes. Maybe not when we teach here, it's not <laughs> biology or physics. Mr. LaJoy does teach a audio engineering class. Yes, he does, absolutely. And he's <laughs> back there helping us with sound right now. <laughs> <laughs> and lighting. So after all of this, uh, did you learn about good, what did you learn about good sound and bad sound and how that makes an audience feel? And do you have any personal experience in the audience? Yes. So with good sound, me and my cousin one or two weeks ago went to go see Hades Town on Broadway and the whole time we felt like we were almost in the show with these characters. You, the sound was all around you and it was so like interesting and immersive. But with bad sound, 
I don't really have an experience with this. If you're in an audience and you hear a lot of feedback or a microphone breaks a lot or something, that kind of takes you out of the moment and makes it a lot harder to really pay attention to what's happening on stage. Great, and I would, I would imagine if you didn't have the Ready Project, this would not be an area that you would have necessarily studied. Yeah. Great. All right, Katie, um, you have made all kinds of connections in so many areas while you've been at King. Uh, I want to start with you and talk a little bit about leadership, ask you about leadership. I know you're taking a leadership course this year. Um, why are you interested in it, and what do you think the role of connections is in leadership? I think leadership is a very fundamental aspect in not only how I learn, but also how I connect with other people. I think I've learned so much from the leaders I've connected with at King, especially on the sports field or even in classrooms and club leaders. Um, so especially with the course I'm taking right now, which is called Leadership in Practice, I'm partnered with a King alumni who went to King and um, had a lot of the same experiences and the same interests as me. So leadership is not only for me about seeing the connections and how people are able to like further their academic learning like I have, but it's also to kind of get a model of how I should or not only model, but also advice of how I should learn and how I should grow for myself. And I think King has been a very vital uh, like way for me to be able to practice my leadership skills because the community is not only very welcoming, but they're also very supportive of you branching out and trying a bunch of new forms of leadership. That's great. And you refer to working with an alumna. Can you, this is the King, we have a program called King Connects. Can you just say a word or two about what that is? Yes. So I'm partnered, basically at the end of sophomore year, I signed up for this class and you are sent a form to fill out with the interest that you're interested in. And I'm currently taking or pursuing the global studies distinction. So that was really the main focus of what I filled out my form about. I wanted someone in the government or someone who has any experience in policy. And fortunately enough, I was partnered with to be honest, the name of her job is very confusing, but she um, is the head of Indo-Pacific Affairs and Space Relations at the Pentagon. She's like one of the chief of staff, but for NASA, so it's a lot at once. Um, but she's taught me so much. I don't think there's been more of an impactful mentor in my life about not only how she branched out, but she's also, I'm very involved in community service. And she kind of talked about how the, the human connections that she's made at King, especially in her times as high school, has impacted how she's uh, transitioned into the work field. And she's given me very useful advice on not only community service, but also on marketing myself and like creating a LinkedIn and creating a resume and all of those tools and interviewing strategies. And it's just been so useful in how I think about how I want to present myself when I'm going to higher levels of education. That's great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go back to you, Doppel, and ask and say, I know you're involved in Model UN. Uh, in fact, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. I think King hosted a gathering here. Uh, what types of connections do you make by participating in the Model UN, whether they're global issues, human connections, or connections to other interests that you have? Sure. So I think that Model UN is a great way to look at so many different types of connections because, for, for one, um, you are connecting with a lot of other people. So King has the privilege of going to um, the Brown and Harvard University Model UN conferences every year. And through those conferences, I've been able to connect with a lot of different people, even who fly in from different countries to participate in this conference. And those connections have been really valuable. Not only that, I've been able to connect with my peers from King in, for example, King Model UN, which is the conference that we hosted um, last week. And also, you're, also, you're kind of connecting in a way to just the broader global community. Because the whole point of Model UN is to debate global issues and try to create resolutions to fix them. For example, I vividly remember at one Brown Model UN conference that we were debating the problem of the mistreatment of the Uyghur Muslims in China. And through doing that and through creating those solutions, I would definitely say that you are connecting with the broader global community because you're trying to figure out a way to address these very important global problems. Amazing. I have to ask you one more question, which is not about Model UN, but it's about King Cares and service learning. Um, and I know that it connects back to something that's, that's actually quite personal for you. Can you tell us about Baking Happiness? Sure. So Baking Happiness, for those who don't know, is um, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that I founded 
And to give some background, during COVID, um, my sisters and I noticed how our grandparents started to feel a bit lonely and isolated, as did many people during COVID, since you couldn't leave your homes. So to try to cheer them up, we decided to bake and package them some cookies. And we noticed how they really appreciated this gesture and began to think about how it's not just them, but the broader community of senior citizens um, in this area, but also in the country, really, that experience loneliness, experience isolation. So in order to combat this and also incorporate something that I really enjoy, which is baking, we, I started Baking Happiness, which has gone about and delivered and packaged these cookies and delivered them to local senior homes, care centers, and we've also partnered with Person to Person, an organization that King works with a lot in order to um, provide these cookies for homebound seniors. And then going more into that aspect of connections, we've also begun to host cookie decorating classes at these senior homes. And through that, I've noticed that we've been able to make these very personal connections with the um, residents there, and it's something that they really appreciate. Um, one last thing to add on to all of this is we've been able to expand this work through Baking Happiness, through King Cares, and we've been able to host these cookie packaging events with the lower middle and upper schools. So we've been able to make connections across schools and really make connections in many different ways through trying to solve a problem. Fantastic. Layla, something unique about you is that you speak a number of languages. So I'm gonna ask you to talk a little bit about that. Um, I know that one is about maybe you started because of a connection to connect to your own heritage. So let's start with that language. Yes. So. I speak Arabic because I am half Egyptian, and it helps me connect to my grandpa and my extended family. And then, what about Spanish? Oh, in Spanish, um, my nanny, she is Guatemalan, so she's been taking care of me since I was born. And when I was little, she would just kind of talk to me in Spanish, and I would just kind of translate it in my brain and pick it up. So when I was about eight or nine, I kind of realized it would be cool to have that kind of connection with her where we could have a conversation in Spanish, so I learned Spanish with her. And then when I was three, I started to take Chinese. And I originally took it because I think my parents really wanted to challenge me and help me learn some skills to help, help me learn in school in the real world. And then I started taking it at my elementary school and I made a connection with some of my childhood best friends and a lot of my family friends. And it has really made a big impact at me since I've been taking it all my entire time at King as well. So you take it at King and outside, and, and certainly languages here are about a lot more, as I said earlier, than grammar and vocabulary, but it's also about learning about cultures and learning about global, you know, global issues. Um, so is there one that's a favorite? Chinese. Uh, <laughs> whoops, sorry, Dad. <laughs> Although you may have been behind the Chinese too, right? That's a possibility. Thank you, Layla. Katie. Um, so one really important and unique thing of, that you've done with, here in terms of deepening connections, um, both academically and personally, has been your involvement with refugees in our community. Can you tell us about both the independent study and about the work that you do directly with refugees? Yeah, so my work with refugees mainly started in sophomore year. I took AP World History I, along with Japal, and at the end of the year, we were tasked with interviewing a, a refugee and we filled out a form of our preferences and we got to work with a partner. And we spent about a month researching the ways in which you tell a story, but also the ways in which you interview and how you let your, the person you're interviewing tell the story in, which, in the way in which they want. So I was partnered with a Ukrainian refugee and to say her story was impactful would be quite an understatement. I think about her every day. It was probably the most emotional conversation I've ever had. And that connection I made through King and the opportunity for me to be able to interview such a powerful woman and a woman who's gone through so much has really been a cornerstone in my life and she's upheld many of the values I still think about today. Um, but then after that, I was very intrigued and wanted to learn more. I just had such an emotional connection to her story. So I reached out to the organization that we did the interviews through called JFS, which is Jewish Family Services. And I immediately began work, began work with them. I, 
organized like three or four refugee baskets that have like all home supplies for incoming families, like uh, trash cans and sheets and towel sets and everything, um, the basic necessities of what they need. And it's been so helpful because through King Cares, they've really supported that initiative and have provided so many opportunities and I've even been able to make a club out of it and I think we have 20 or 30 members and it's only growing, this is our first year. Um, wow. So it's really just been such a great way to use King Cares and the empathy that the other people in our community have to be able to connect with refugees and immigrants in a very divisive it, it is. It's amazing that you've been able to, to, you know, you're not afraid to take these kinds of things on, and you've made a difference already. I mean, every single one of you on the stage has made a difference already. You said something that made me want to go back to Hathaway for just a second, because I remember when we were up here practicing, um, uh, Hathaway, you talked about why you had an interest in women's issues to begin with, and, and maybe this is a little bit of a shout out to your mom. Yes, well, my mom is in breast medicine, and so it's been very impactful having powerful women in my life, especially with my both my grandmothers as well. Um, I think that just having these powerful women in my life has led me to want to study the history and the oppression that women have faced over the years as well, um, and it's just been amazing having those women in my life. Thank you. All right. Um, and finally, all four of you are involved in you know, co-curricular things that involve connections as well. And certainly in the athletics and the arts. So I'm going to start with Hathaway and ask you the question of, in what way do your experiences in theater and music, have they helped to make you connection? Have they helped you to make connections? Well, um, I would like to focus on the connection between um, just myself and mentors because I've had such amazing mentors in the theater space. Um, all the teachers in the theater department, including Mr. LaJoy over there and um, Mr. Silence, Ms. Darton, and Ms. Bach have all helped me so much grow as a performer and a person. I've changed so much in the past three years and it would not have been without their endless help. I did a, another summer program this past summer called Broadway Evolved and there was a lengthy audition process um, for that program and Ms. Bach was the one who, who is our choir teacher here for the middle and upper school. She's the one who helped me do go through the entire process and she was just an amazing mentor and person to help me um, throughout that entire process. I have a question that may be harder for you to answer. That was great. It's awesome. Um, how do you connect with the audience? So it's a little... Well, I mean, being on stage right now, it's kind of easy to see the faces in the front row, but um, it's kind of difficult to be able to connect with the audience when you're, it's kind of blurry in the back, but you're able to see the people in the front, but really just putting yourself out there, taking risks, um, knowing that they're there to support you, they're not there to judge you. Um, one big thing that I always keep in the back of my mind is, especially in a show, they don't know if you make mistakes, so just act like it doesn't <laughs> happen. Um, so that's something that I carry with myself every day, that if you just present yourself how you want, don't let mistakes get to you, and connecting with your audience is one of the most important parts of theater, and just being able to take risks goes right in, along with that. Great. And finally, I'm going to go to athletics for a moment, and Katie and Joppa, I'm going to ask you, because you've both played leadership roles, you've both been captains on your teams. What, um, talk a little bit about connections on a team and how important they are for the success of the team. Either of you can go first, doesn't matter. Okay, I'll start. Um, so I started um, the fall of freshman year going into soccer even though I barely would call myself good. Um, but I really played just so I'd have a community of girls that I knew when I was walking in the hallways and I wasn't just a scared freshman. and. Soccer definitely changed my life. Like the, the girls I've met on the team, they've really changed my idea of leadership. And it's really been impactful to not only learn how to keep yourself, keep your head high during the good moments, but also the bad. We've had uh, like one or two developing seasons and then one or two very good seasons. But just even the small moments after practice, like, or during practice when you're making jokes with your friends on the sidelines, you're cheering each other on. I think just that like inclusive environment and just how you always have a friend to your left or to your right, wherever you go, has been so important at King and has definitely allowed me to be less scared to speak out or less scared knowing that I have a bunch of people that already support me in my corner. And then I also was a captain last year 
for lacrosse oh. and I'm playing again and it's the same exact thing. I've met so many amazing girls and really kind of connecting to a Hathaway, like just so many um, amazing female mentors for myself, my coaches and just all the women around me have been so impactful in the way in which I lead, but also how I lead on this sports field and also in the classroom and just all around. Awesome. So I started rowing in freshman year and I'm still on the rowing team. I'm one of the captains of the rowing team this year. And talking about connections in rowing, it's really been something that's been impactful for me, for sure. Because coming into freshman year, similar to Katie, there was a lot of people in the grade above me who were willing to come and willing to help out, not just through rowing, but also in the classroom for example. So that's something that's definitely stuck with me. And even now in my senior year, there are still people that I keep in touch with who were essentially acting as mentors for me while rowing. So that's something that I've really appreciated a lot. And then going on to how I've, like another way I've seen connections, just um, through these people helping me get through the sport because rowing at times can be very physically demanding, very mentally demanding. And there's times where you feel like you want to quit. And be, like in the middle of a piece, for example, when it's really hard, you feel like you can't go any longer and they were always there to support and tell you that it's going to be okay and that you're able to get through it. So through these connections, I've really found it helpful, especially in this zone of athletics. That's great. Okay, one last question you're each going to answer, and it is, what does King mean to you? Hathaway, how about you start? King has been such an amazing place, and part of the reason that um, I chose to come to King was because of just how broad you're able to expand your horizons, and I mean, I wasn't really sure what I was interested in going into freshman year, so just having the ability to choose so many different I, different things and different passions, um, just dip your feet in the water, like be able to take a leadership class, take a public speaking class, go do an art class or take a, an idea course in the iLab. You're able to try out so many different interests and then really find and narrow down what you're passionate in and then follow that in independent studies like Chapel said or really any other way. It's just a great space to be able to explore. Great, Layla, what does King mean to you? To me, King means community because from even the first day I got here when I was so nervous and I didn't know anybody, I really quickly made a connection to a lot of the people in my grade and some of my teachers, like Miss Darton, for example, and they all really helped me turn into the person I am over the last three years and helped me focus on some of my talents and some of my interests, such as theater and performing. Yeah, Paul, what about you? So I would say King to me means like teachers that really care because one thing that I really enjoy about King is how the teachers are willing to go beyond just trying to get you, like trying to make you get the max amount of points on a test, for example, but they really want to see you understand the material and able to like enjoy the material even. So that's something that I found really helpful because by understanding the material, by being able to appreciate and find the connections between different um, classes, courses, topics, you're able to subsequently get like all the points that you may be striving for while, while also having that understanding in your mind, which is really what's going to set everyone up for success in the future. Awesome. And Katie? So kind of connecting what all of the, my past three peers have said, um, the same thing for me. I think the best word I could use to describe it is I was able to become my own individual self and flourish in my own identity. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm an identical twin. So I've always struggled my whole life with being able to find things that were unique to me and find things that I was passionate about and just could be passionate about by myself. Um, but kind of like what Japal was saying, it's been so helpful to have teachers and mentors that just push you beyond the classroom and push you to actually go out and experience the real world. And a bunch of service learning that I've done has been because of my teachers. And it just has been so impactful to, I've, like I said before, I do the global studies distinction, but I also have been able to dive deeper into economics and public policy and just not just global studies. It's just been such a robust and unique experience that I've had, and it hasn't just been one path. I've been able to explore so many different paths, like Hathaway said. So I think it's very 
impactful for me to be able to develop my own self while also developing myself academically and um, service learning and throughout my community. Wonderful. So I had planned on sort of summing everything up, but there's no way that what I could say could ever be better than what they have said. So I'm just going to skip my last words because I want to just say thank you. I, I you know, I'm blown away. I don't know about anybody else, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Take the chairs up and bring them all the way, all the way so they're out of the way because the screen's going to go up and. Come on in, friends. All right. I know. <laughs> I'm excited to introduce two multi talented students who are going to end our program with an amazing performance, which I can't wait to see again. I don't know how many of you were lucky enough to see Drowsy Chaperone last year. Um, I literally have never seen the, a high school production of that quality. It was, it was mind blowing and I know that the audiences when they left just continued not only to talk about it in the, you know, outside the pack, but like for weeks afterwards. But before I leave the stage and give it to you two guys, um, Zach, I have a question for you. You're obviously a talented performer Thank among you. many talents and interests. You're also part of the prestigious and competitive Aspire Science Research Program at King. Is there a connection between performance and Aspire Science Research? Actually, there is like a really huge underlying connection between the two disciplines. So, I mean, on the surface level, those really don't seem like they have anything to do with each other. But um, in terms of Aspire, uh, I go to a lot of competitions where I have to present my science research to judges, and I kind of have to put my own performative spin on it, basically, to make sure that it's easily understandable, for example. And so when I do that, I use some of the performative skills I've learned from the theater, from classes with Mr. Silence, Ms. Darton, and I apply them to the field of science research in order to give a stronger presentation, and actually vice versa. So it's really just helped both ways, and interdisciplinary connections are huge for me. That's awesome. Thank you. And finally, Stephen, you too have a whole list of interests in addition to theater and singing. I know that theater and singing are actually an integral part of your identity. Katie was talking about identity. I know they're a big part of your identity in addition to doing things like Model UN and debate and being our um, student council vice president. You're sort of a natural connector. But I'd like you to, um, to just sort of talk for a moment about what theater and singing have meant to you here and how have they helped you to connect to yourself or to others or to audiences? Um, I mean, theater and singing, predominantly my, my area of focus was singing, but it sort of branched out into theater as a result of it. Um, singing, I think with the, mul with the multiple languages that I've been lucky enough to earn, I I've been able to connect with multiple people through singing and through the mentors that I've developed here in the performing arts program, like Miss Darton, the choir, the people in choir that I study with. I, I think it's really important to acknowledge them and how I've been able to connect with them because they're one of the reasons that I'm here today and I, I'm, I'm singing and I'm doing theater and I'm doing something that I love. Um, I had sort of lost a love for theater um, in middle school, but when I, when I came back in the upper school, my friends were pushing me to join choir because they knew it was something deep down that I'd, I'd sort of forgotten about. And I think that with that push with the people around me, I've been able to reconnect to myself and develop my form of self-expression. That's great. All right. And now for the best. We are going to see what? Tell us about what we're about to watch. Uh, you're about to see Cold Feet from the Drowsy Chaperone. All right. Let's do this. Big be bothering you. 
just what it is. Cold feet, cold feet. Brother, you've got cold feet. You can make them cold feet hot. With a little rhythm, young feet, old feet can be uncontrolled. Feet, rhythm, make them cold feet trot down the aisle. Frosty arches, they can learn to swing. souls come alive and take that time. Cold feet, small feet, turn them into cold feet. Breathe and make them cold feet. Hot. You don't say. Well, why don't you just slime back into your little mud hole, you backstabbing worm? Say, what are you up to? I'm singing a song. A Dixie remedy for wedding day jitters. You, you think you've got jitters. You've got the easy part. I've still got to get rice, boutonnieres, and a minister. I have the weight of the wedding on my shoulders. George, it sounds like you've got cold feet. What do I got? Cold feet. What do I want? Cold feet. What do I do? It's cold feet? No! You make the cold feet hot. It's hot. 